What a mysterious world we live in, right? It is mysterious. See, a mystery is something that cannot be explained. It cannot be answered. It cannot be solved. It is the truth eluding us. People who look at things scientifically say, well, where's the proof? I need evidence. Show me that this is real. We don't take the responsibility of confirming the truth ourselves. We let the doctors do it. We let them tell us what's what, even when we know something is off. Even when we know what we are being told doesn't make sense. Did you know back in the 50s, cigarettes were prescribed by some doctors? Yes, smoking cigarettes was advertised on television as being good for you. Today we understand that it kills people. No, we've always known this. Without picking up any type of documented research or book, we should all know that an inhaling any type of smoke is bad for you. So how did they get away with it? People in the 50s were not idiots. How did they get suckered? See, the point is people lie. They hide things. It is when people start to ask questions, we start citing facts, we start pulling statistics out of our rear end. Why do we do that? A statistic that is constantly changing and never accounts for everyone. Another calculated opinion. We love to calculate things, don't we? So let's go ahead and calculate the answer to this then. There are people who have died in very mysterious and concerning ways. And one of these is by what's known as spontaneous human combustion. Let's take a closer look at this and see if we can figure out what's igniting these fires that seem to start burning from within. And you will see that this is one of those things that the more evidence you put together, the more complex the riddle becomes. And that's why they call it a mystery. What is it that you are witnessing when you watch something burn? What is happening? What is fire? Simply put, it is the rapid release or transformation of energy. First, whatever it is that is burning is the fuel. For example, when you burn or boil water, you are exposing the water to heat. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms begin to move rapidly and break apart creating a gas or vapor, steam. And when you add other elements and light to this process, you get fire. Through chemiluminescence and incandescence, the reaction of those other elements give off photons of light. And the fuel determines the properties of the fire, such as the color and temperature. You can basically look at the visual light spectrum and see that the lower frequency colored flames, such as red and orange, burn at lower temperatures between 225 to 1000 degrees Celsius. As we move up in frequency, we get to the very bright yellowish white flames that reach temperatures at around 1500 degrees Celsius. Once you get to the greenish blue to blue flames, we are talking about temperatures that reach around 3000 degrees Celsius. Now different forms of matter have what are called auto ignition points. The auto-ignition point is the temperature that matter will spontaneously ignite without any external source of ignition. So if you take a piece of wood or a log and increase the temperature of the log to 300 degrees Celsius or 572 degrees Fahrenheit, it will self-ignite and catch fire. The amount of time it takes for that log to burn depends on, of course, the amount of fuel or how big the log is if it continues to burn at a constant temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster it burns. 
That dry piece of wood will ignite at 300 degrees Celsius. So at what temperature does the human body ignite, being that it is really between 50 and 70% water as an adult? 760 degrees Celsius or 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. So in other words, if you were to go outside and the temperature just kept going up, you would probably die in temperatures from 120 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. As the temperature increased, most of the water in your body would begin to boil off, evaporate, and it would take that dry body a temperature of 1400 degrees Fahrenheit for it to self-ignite and catch fire. Now folks, this is a temperature that is hotter than some lava. And this is still not enough heat to destroy bone rapidly. Those who are into the 9-11 conspiracy will appreciate this. Do you know what it takes to completely destroy the human body by burning it? This is why they build crematoriums. You see, you need a retort or a large oven. With exhaust and filters, you need gas and lots of it. Not to mention the cleanup and maintenance. And with all the money people put into cremating a body, they still cannot get rid of the remaining bone fragments. Instead, they grind them up, and this ground up bone is what makes up the ashes in an urn. It is only at 3000 degrees Celsius where you can begin to incinerate bone. And it takes at least 12 hours at that temperature for the bone to be almost completely incinerated. So here's the question. Knowing this, at what temperature does the body need to be in order for this to occur in about 20 minutes? Well, this was seemingly the case of Helen Conway, an elderly heavyset woman and reported careless smoker, who the investigating fire chief says had been burning for 21 minutes and it only took 6 minutes for her body to be completely consumed, leaving only her lower legs behind. If you go and do research on spontaneous human combustion, you're going to hear about all the creepy cases. How the victims never scream, often overweight, and drink alcohol or smoke, or were sick. You're going to hear how the lower extremities are often left behind, and how the victims were found sitting in a chair or lying down in front of one. The sweet smell in the air. The localized fire that's hot enough to melt bone but not hot enough to melt anything else in the room around it. You'll hear in some cases they find shrunken skulls, how that makes sense. You'll see how the ages of the victims do vary and sometimes nothing is left behind. Sometimes the victims did not smoke or drink, and sometimes they were skinny. There is this theory called the wick effect, okay? And this theory suggests that a human being can burn much like the way the wick of a candle burns. So the clothing acts as the initial wick, and as it burns it is then fueled by the fat that is in the flesh. And then the flesh becomes the wick, and continues to burn into the bones, where it begins to be fueled by the bone marrow. Which is absolutely 100% ridiculous. You see, folks, this is what I'm talking about. This is the science that was fed to the public. Even if a person accidentally drops a cigarette on a t-shirt that was soaked in gasoline overnight, that body does not just keep burning away into nothing. There remains tougher tissue like the heart and other internal organs. And even when that's gone, there is still bone left behind. So what about the people who have seen someone spontaneously combust? Well, when it comes to witnesses, there are a few reports of people seeing things like sparks flying out of the victim or bluish-green flames. Although, in most cases, people are alone, this has happened in public. And in a few cases, people have survived this. They describe the person's skin and clothing suddenly beginning to smoke on the upper torso, around the shoulders, chest, and back. There's another interesting theory that suggests acetone, which is an organic compound produced by the body in the metabolic process, and ketosis. It is also produced more in teething children. Depending on diet and health, depending on if you drink alcohol or not, some people end up producing more acetone than others. And this stuff does burn blue and hot. 
Experiments have been done to test this theory and the results are quite compelling. But even though acetone burns in a fashion that is similar to how the victims of SHC have burned, no one has been able to prove that acetone is the key ingredient in any case. Some people think it could be static electricity. Some think it could be methane gas produced by the body. One of the more modern theories is a directed energy weapon, but the technology for that would have had to exist for a very long time. Some believe it could be divine intervention or the wrath of God. In the centuries that this phenomenon has existed, there has been absolutely no irrefutable explanation for this to happen to anyone. And this is where the phenomenon goes from strange to paranormal. There are a few people who believe spontaneous human combustion is the result of demonic possession or simply the work of demons. And the theories go on and on. Aliens. I am inclined to believe that this is some type of short circuit in the flow of charged particles and electrical energy in the body, creating a chain reaction like a nuclear explosion. That is the only way I can comprehend the speed at which these people burn and that they are really, for the most part, the only thing that burns up. Other than that, I would have to say yes, this is probably something supernatural. It is concerning not to know what the exact cause of spontaneous human combustion is, as the majority of us would like to prevent this from happening to ourselves and others close to us. But the truth remains that this is an extremely rare occurrence, and you are more likely to be struck by lightning. Which is another theory, by the way. More and more people are getting into this phenomenon. So maybe one day soon we will have the answers. Until then, I guess the best we can do is have faith and try and keep our cool.